Alright, welcome back to another episode of Ace Attorney. In the in the last episode, we entered the second trial for uh, Will Powers here. And now we are interrogating Sal Manella uh, on the stand here to try to figure out what really happened that day. So, uh, l l let's get right back into it. So, uh, we're in the morning, I was uh, doing an action scene run through. Uh, w what about that run through? In the employee area. That's right. It was a fight scene between the steel samurai and the old magistrate. Is anybody else at the run through? Oh yeah, the security lady was sitting there watching the whole thing. Lol. She was chewing on ham, if you can believe it. She certainly has the lungs for it. Anyone else? Nope, just us four. Well, there would have been someone else there. Because Oh shit, I accidentally did the whole thing. I accidentally did it again. I don't wanna do this! I hit the Q button by accident! I don't need to do that again! Uh. Alright, but there was somebody else there because that little boy was there. Because he said that he's always there at every action scene run through. If I'm not mistaken. So would it be this picture? Book? Picture book? I'm, uh, I'm unsure. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, let me let me save before doing this, cause uh, I don't like getting penalties. Damn it. Uh. All right. Let's see here. Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. It it does. God damn. Damn it. I I, fa I failed. You failed. Alright, well let's just move on. It took a lot more time than I thought it would. How much time did you think it would? Why did you, why did it go on for so long? I'm pretty sure you already heard about this. But WP twisted his ankle during the run talk show. Oh right, that's the limp. Which of course led to me missing my lunch, Roths. I don't even know what that means. Roths? Rolling on the floor, starving? Yeah, I guess so. I heard that everyone else had lunch in the employee area. What exactly did they have for lunch? Two birds stuck, the sister cooks them up. Come to think of it, there was a plate with some bones on in the employee area. Everyone else, meaning that the witness did not eat with them. Oh. But I had a meeting in the studio to trailer, so I ended up skipping lunch. <sighs> So in the end, you didn't get to eat. Yeah, no steak at least. Could you believe it? That must have been tough. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Phlegm. Garlic. Trash. Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the way the way I delivered that was just really weird. Doesn't something about that seem odd to you? It's contradictory. Yeah, it does seem odd now that you mention it. Mr. Manella. <laughs> when I went to Studio 2, I saw something on the table there. There were two plates. The same kind of plates as the ones in the employee area. Who ate lunch there? <laughs> Good call. Uh, I was embarrassed, so I didn't want to mention it. But I did eat after all. A T-bone steak, you mean? Yeah, well, I mean, the sister went through all that trouble. I brought it to the trail up thinking I could eat it later. Clearly a man who likes to eat, I'd suspect as much. So, when exactly did you eat it? Uh, we took one break during that meeting. I uh, wolfed it down then. A mental image I will carry with me to my grave. Wait a second. If they took a break in the meeting, that contradicts his testimony. I'll press on that one a bit more. In the meeting around four, I'm pretty sure no one left their chairs. But didn't you say you took a break? You didn't take a single break? Oh, uh, well, yeah, not a one. But that contradicts your previous testimony. If only I had an idea. Wait a second, maybe I do have an idea. Press harder. 
Because that contradicts your previous testimony, you son of a bitch. Wait a second, Mr. Mandela, you've just contradicted yourself. Didn't you just tell the court that you ate that T-bone steak during our break? <laughs> Ruffle. Well? <sighs> Mr. Mandela, what's this all about? Well, uh, uh, I guess we did take a little break. Phoenix, great job. If they took a break, one of them could have gone to the studio during that time. Yo, oh, oh no. I call on the witness to testify to the court about his break. <sighs> Very well. Mr. Mandela, your testimony, please. Huh, <sighs> huh. <sighs> I don't know how to laugh in this accent. Uh-oh, Edgeworth is laughing. That's the first time I've seen him do that, actually. It's kind of weird. Yeah, Freeler will take a break, Raffle. But it was only 15 minutes. 15? That's only 13 and best 12. Not enough time for someone to say, commit murder in Studio One, wall. That's only just enough time to eat a T-bone steak, if you ask me. <sighs> I don't think it would even be enough time for that, but that's just me. Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. Alright, we'll press on every little detail. Okay, we you did take a break, but it was only 15 minutes. What were you doing for those 15 minutes? He said, uh, you know, eating a table and stick with us. There were two plates on that table. Oh, right, the other one was D. 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 Sorry. D. Vasquez's play. D. Vasquez, the producer. To eat a T bone steak in 15 minutes, that's quite a feat, honestly. I've eaten larger things quicker. Now, that, that ain't that impressive. Hmm. Well, it might just be enough time. Why is that? I have to say, you look like a guy who gets through his meals pretty fast. Well, I was facing a cold, slightly cheery T-bone steak. Even I have to take my time eating that kind of food, lol. Well, Phoenix? Well, he just contradicted himself because he said he only ate it in 15 minutes. <clears throat> that testimony was too short to wring any kind of useful information out of. All you have to do is that he was able to go to Studio One in that time. Oh, great. Is that all? Oh, hmm. We took a break, but it was only 15 minutes. I have a feeling this is kind of the area where I need to do that. Okay, let's present the guide map, because it might be able to show that he could indeed have gone to Studio 2 during that time. <sighs> let's try it. Your Honor, that statement contradicts evidence. Ah, oh, yeah, we failed. Okay, I'll take the L on this one since I forgot to save. Huh? Really? Objection overruled. Try to think before you make accusations, Mr. Wright. Whoops, that didn't go so well. Okay, I'll take the L on that one. Um, we'll save before this then, just so I don't have to take another L. Alright, there's gotta be something here, but I don't know what. So, his death was at 2.30. Monkey. Maybe the monkey fella has something to do with it. Uh, nope. Oh, I failed again. Oh. All right, fine. Someone to say commit murder. Hmm. I don't know about that. It's only just enough time to eat a T-bone steak, if you ask me. But uh, you contradicted your own evidence. You contradicted your own statement before. Because, uh, well, when I pressed him about that, he said, he said something that contradicted it. Hold on, let me press him again. Well, it's really cold, slightly chewy. Even I have to take my time eating that kind of food, but you literally just said that, uh, that you wolfed it down in 15 minutes. So if you took your time, then it wouldn't have taken 15 minutes. Uh, we took a break. Well, l let's press on that because maybe there's something. What time exactly did you take this break? Huh. 
I'll say it was from around 2.30 to start at 2.45. 2.30? That's the time of death. So he could have gone to Studio One, killed Hammer, and come back. I guess it's possible time-wise. Hmm. So, he took a break and it was for 15 minutes. What, what, what do I present here, man? I don't, I don't know. So this photo was taken at 2 o'clock. But the break happened at 2.30, so that couldn't have happened. Uh, the death was at 2.30. I don't know, let's do it. Let's try it. Ah, okay. ah damn it. Ugh, fine. Ah, I don't know what to present here. Hmm. I have someone to say commit murder. I don't know, maybe. Okay, so not enough time for someone to commit murder. So, let's present this again, and maybe it'll work, I don't know. Uh, it begins all the same, all the same, all the same. God damn it, I don't know what to do. It's only just enough time to eat a T-bone steak, if you ask me. What would I present to contradict that? Hmm. Sleeping pills. That has nothing to do with any of this. I mean, I just have to prove that he could have gone there in the time. So, maybe I present this here. The guide map? Ah, fuck, you know. What do I do? I don't know. I might have to look up something the kids might call. Oh, I don't know. A guide? No, I don't want to look up a guide. Because that's just boring. Why would you look up a guide? I want to figure it out myself. So, hmm. So he took a break. It's only 15 minutes. Not enough time for someone to say commit murder. It's only just enough time to eat a T-bone steak if you ask me. Doesn't seem like that would be true. Hmm. Not enough time, it's only 15 minutes, 15. Maybe the monkey. Monkey. I don't know, let's try it. Ah, God damn it. I don't know, I don't know what to do. It's confusing. Uh, we took a break. So you did indeed take a break, that's true. Maybe the photo, again, I don't know. I'm just gonna try everything until it works. Nope, okay, cool. Uh, I don't know, maybe that, that guy is starting to sound like a better idea. So you know what, I'm just gonna look it up. Because, uh, honestly, this is just way too annoying, so, you know. Hey, Ace Attorney, it's like, what? What do I even type in? I guess I'll just type in a guide. Alright, here we go. I'm just gonna scroll through this. Uh, I don't know. Put on some fucking music or something. Uh, Turnabout Samurai, so... We'll do the trial. I think it's day three trial. Hmm. So, I don't know. So one, two, three. Did I press this one? But yeah, it's just why is that? There's really all there is to that. To eat a T-bone steak. Hmm. I don't know. Well, Phoenix, that testimony is too short to wring any kind of useful information out of. All you have to do is prove that he was able to go to Studio One at that time. Oh, great. Is that all? But how? How do I prove it? God damn it. So, not exactly sure what the hell I'm meant to do. I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out, and this guide is like the least helpful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It doesn't even tell you what you need to do. So... Well, what, what do I need to do?
Hmm, so you took a break, and it was only 15 minutes, but that's only 13 in base 12. What do you mean by that? Doing in those 15 minutes, eating the T-Bone steak, there are two plates. Uh, the other one was D. Vazquez's plate, the producer. Yes, that's quite a feat indeed. Huh. I don't know. I'm really quite confused. Not enough time for someone to commit murder. Let's try the murder weapon, why not? We haven't tried that yet. And, yep, it just keeps happening, doesn't it? Mm-hmm, yep. Someone to commit murder, that's only enough time to eat a T-bone steak. Only... Hmm... So you did indeed take a break, and what else? You were pierced through the chest, you was pierced through the chest by a spear. So... I mean, the guide map would be like kind of the thing, right? Because it would show how it could have gone there. Yep, yeah, it doesn't work, so I don't, I don't know what I'm meant to do. Mm. Oh god. So I'm just trying to think. What am I doing wrong here? I mean, there's nothing contradictory about this, there's just nothing there. So I'm just thinking. What to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. Not enough time for someone to say commit murder in Studio One. But what if it was? So, I mean, how could that be, though? It's only just enough time to eat a T-bone steak. But what... How does that give me anything? I'm very confused here. So, it's just enough time. Maybe it's the picture again. Uh, I don't know. Let's try it. And let me guess, it just it just keeps happening. It's an infinite loop. You can't break out of it. I swear to God. So I mean, so. We took a break, it was only 15 minutes, but that's only 13 in base 12. What does that even mean? Not enough time, that's only just enough time to eat a T-bone steak if you ask me. None of this helps me, at all. Okay, so according to this, I have to press his, thir his first statement. So what exact yeah, it says from 2.30 to 2.45, so he could have, and then I press his third statement, and maybe this helps. Oh, there it is, okay, apparently you're just supposed to press something in a specific fucking order. Well, that was a massive waste of time, but I finally <laughs> figured it out. That took me way too long, but I did it, and that's what matters. Oh boy, haven't we had enough of this pointless line of questioning? Your Honor, the testimony to this point has made one certain fact painfully clear. The people in the trailer had nothing to do with this murder. It was impossible for any of them to go into Studio One. What? Something wrong, Mr. Wright? Surely you aren't suggesting one of the people in the trailer went to Studio One. Huh. Well, Mr. Wright. Phoenix, this is critical. Think about it before you give your answer. Do you claim someone from the trailer went to Studio One? No, it's impossible. They couldn't have gone there because of the Mr. Monkey Head. I don't want to write off so many possible suspects, but I can't keep claiming the impossible either. I agree that it was impossible for anyone in the trailer to go to the studio at that time. Ha ha, I thought you might be thoughtlessly treading on thin ice again. Ugh. Water. 
but I see you had at least an inkling of the truth. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? It's quite simple. True, the break in the trailer meeting came right at the time of death. However, the path from there to the scene of the crime was blocked. The fallen Mrs. Monkey had barred the way. And you can just, you can literally just walk around it, dude. It's not hard. At, at around 2.15, a strong gust of wind knocked off the studio mascot's head. Ergo, when the people in the trailer took a break at 2.30, the way to the studio was blocked. Blocked by Mrs. Monkey's severed head. It's actually Mr. Monkey, but Edgeworth has a point, And somehow I feel no desire to correct him. I believe we have seen enough evidence. I would like to relieve Mr. Manella from the stand. What? It's over? God, he's fat. Very well. The court's opinion on this case is as follows. We have found that there were several other people in Studio 2 on the day of the murder. However, it is also clear that none of these people could have gone to Studio 1. <sighs> They, therefore, have no relation to this case. Furthermore, with regard to the photo of the steel samurai, given the size of the costume, no one other than Mr. Powers could have worn it that day. And that is, la and that is lacking in decisive evidence that he is the one who did it. If we had that, I'm afraid I would have to find Mr. Powers guilty. Your Honor, the prosecution is pleased to announce that we indeed have decisive evidence. A witness... Uh, who's this witness, Mr. Edgeworth? My witness saw the very moment when the Steel Samurai skewered the victim. Mora, I will have order. I see. The court will take a ten minute recess, after which we will hear your witness. Court is adjourned for a recess. Well, we're fucked. I mean, uh, there's really no way out of this one. What do we do now, Mia? If everyone in that trailer has an alibi. I'm sorry, Phoenix. I guess I was wrong. But Mia, don't tell me you're giving up. If you give up, what hope do I have? Don't get me wrong. I've never given up on a trial before. Not while there is still a chance. Only one thing became clear in your cross-examination. The people in that trailer could not have gone to Studio One. I thought there was one, there was more to it than that, but I was wrong. That's all there is. Uh, uh, what's going to happen to me? Uh, well, no, I'm not Simon, I'm well powered anymore. Kinda seems like everyone in that courtroom thinks I did it. They think I'm a murderer. Don't worry, Mr. Powers. If you are innocent, we will prove it, I guarantee it. Leave it to us and be yourself, be strong. You are the Steel Samurai. You are the children everywhere, after all. Uh, you... Thanks. Uh. Okay, Phoenix. This one's for the kids. Let's do it. Oh, boy. For, for the children. I want to do it for the children. Sorry, I, I'm really sorry about that five-minute gap where I was just like, Duh, What do I do? And how was I supposed to figure out that I was supposed to press the first statement then the third statement? That's a very specific order that I really didn't know how to figure out. Court is now back in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. The prosecution has a concern. As our witness is a grade schooler of 10 years, and this is a murder case, we worry that the defense might cause unnecessary trauma with his cruel questioning. Nice to see Edgeworth taking the moral high ground. However, we have no choice. The prosecution calls Cody Hackins to the stand. Oh, look at how tiny he is. Your Honor, perhaps you could rain, arrange a box for him to stand on. Oh, uh, uh, right. God, please give, bring him a box. One of those donut crates should do. Will the witness state his name and grade in school? Witness! What? Just cause you're all grown up doesn't mean you can push me around. <sighs> Cody, 
Answer his question, okay? Hey, it's you, the nice lady. I'm Cody Hackins. I'm in second grade. I get the feeling this is going to be a long, long day. <sighs> Mr. Edgeworth, please remember that you're speaking to a child. Try to be gentle. Who <sighs> witness? I mean, Cody. He's having trouble with this gentle thing. You were present. Uh, you were at Global Studios on the day of the uh, incident. You got a problem with that? Uh, please tell us what you saw that day. What, Pops? You want me to tell you when Gramps with the beard over there? Just, M Mr. Edgeworth will be fine. I prefer I wasn't able to read that. A very long day. Incidentally, photographic equipment is strictly forbidden in the courtroom. <clears throat> My apologies, Your Honor. He said he wouldn't testify if he couldn't bring it. I'd like special permission if that's possible. Wait, so you're saying you had to bargain terms with a kid and you lost? Hey, I just got this new camera. Don't really know how to use it all that good yet, but I bring it with me wherever I go. Phoenix, I wonder if he had that camera on the day of the murder. You'd better make a note of it in the court record. Oh uh, yes, he's still learning how to use it. Very well, Cody. Please testify to the court about what you saw on the day of the incident. I wanted to see a Steel Samurai rehearsal just once. I found a map on the internet and went on the studios that day. I went through the, the woods off the pass so that old lady wouldn't catch me. I was going for the studio. I kinda got lost on the way though for about 30 minutes. Then I came out by the studio, there was a Steel Samurai. It totally rocked right before my eyes, out came the bad guy. Of course the Steel Samurai took him down, pow. If I had my camera with me, I would have been... You know, it, I would have been... It would have been the time for the shot, I tell ya. Anyway, I couldn't go into the studio, so I went home. Wait. He, he had the camera on the day of the murder, so... But we gentle, please remember you're talking to a child. This kid is tougher than most adults we see in here, honestly. But if he had the camera on the day of the murder, that directly contradicts his testimony. So... I was going for the studio, got lost, totally rocked, of course. If I had my camera, didn't you say you had your camera on the day of the murder? If you had your camera? You mean you weren't carrying your camera then? And no, I, w I wasn't. It's not like I have it all the time. Really? I guess seeing the killing freaked him out and he went home. Phoenix, remember he's a child. Use gentle words, but be firm. Easy for you to say. I wanted to see Steel Samurai rehearsal just once. It uh, came back, totally rocked. Of course, Steel Samurai took him down. Okay, so hold on. Doesn't it say he had it on the day of the murder? Cody always carries it, though he's still learning how to use it. I'm... Hmm, hmm. Let's try to present it. Cody, what you just said seems, well, a little strange. Didn't you say before that you always bring your digital camera wherever you go? You were quite, quite clear about that. <laughs> Cody, you shouldn't lie here. You understand that, right? Mr. Right, word with you. Uh oh, I was putting the pressure on too much. What is this digital camera contraption you're talking about? It's uh, a digital camera, Your Honor. It's kind of a new sort of camera. Uh, how do I explain that? Hi, she. Uh, anyway, Cody. I can't believe you want to bring your camera on a trip to the studios. You did bring it, didn't you? Um... Mr. Wright, how cruel you are to terrorize a poor child so. I don't care if he's a child or a per prosecuting attorney. No one should lie in court. What do you mean, or a prosecuting attorney? Well, Cody... What? Yeah, so I had my camera, so what? You got a problem with that? Well, you always take a picture of it every time, right? So you did have a camera, and you did use this camera? Why would I use it? I, I was too busy watching. Hmm, very well. Please testify to this court about what you were busy watching. 
Unfortunately, we won't be able to see that in this episode because I'm just about all out of time. So thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'm going to see you guys in the next episode of Ace Attorney. And we're going to pick this little kid's testimony apart. Oh boy, I can't wait to terrorize children in court.